Good Thursday morning. This is 106.1 KYVZ. Joe Vizuri visiting once again with meteorologist Chris Schramick at Decision Weather Now, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel. Chris, a stormy evening across portions of the plains last night, especially for listeners in and around the Gove County, Kansas area. Yeah, Joe, we had a round of active severe weather last night, and that was basically due to a low-pressure system that was working out of Colorado, and we had a big dry line set up that extended all the way from I-70 down to Lubbock, Texas. You saw dew points on the, to the west of that line all the way down in the 20s and 30s, and on the uh, along it and to the eastern side, which was basically highways 25 and 83, you saw dew points in that 60 to 65 degree range. Up here north of I-70, we saw cloud cover and cooler temperatures, easterly flow pumping moisture into the area. Uh, so that kind of inhibited any development further north in that Gove County or just south of I-70 in that tornado a watch that was issued yesterday after late afternoon and evening. We had a round of more severe weather that came out of Colorado toward in the evening hours around 8 o'clock that moved off to our east during the early morning hours. It had some hail in it as it tracked along that Kansas and Nebraska border to the east. It were reports of hail of one to one and a quarter inch with that uh, later evening storm activity. But when we were looking at that uh, tornado watch area, we saw two areas of Tornadic large hail set up. One started to develop there northeast of the Scott County Lake and then moved through southern Gove County, the Utica area, Pendemus into Trigo County. And it did have a small landspout tornado. They just kind of two cells had those two landspouts in them and just kind of tracked over each other in uh, the rural areas of southern Gove County. We did get to on our live feed on YouTube and on the Kansas America Weather Streaming Channel page. I uh, had a spotter out there uh, with uh, Radar Omega, and he was giving us good video footage of that. It was really rain-wrapped, so you couldn't see it touching the ground. But at times, particularly there towards sunset, you could see into it, and there was several trained spotters that reported that to the Weather Service. The other thing was the four-inch hail. There was three reports of four-inch-plus hail in Gove County, and the same with that storm in Texas. I mean, that large watch area box, there was only two really big storms. There was a couple down there in Texas that just did the same thing. They kind of sat in the same area, had four-inch hail reports with them, and the small tornado landspout, you know, F1-type cornetic activity. Um, So that was kind of rare to have such a big dispersity of location along a large dry line like that and only – uh, two or three areas that were really affected the whole evening. Rainfall in those areas picked up, you know, got two, three inches, could have been some localized flooding. Uh, we more generally saw anywhere from a quarter to three quarter inch across the northwest round of weather that came in. There may have been some locally one inch amounts, but today with that system will pull off to the Midwest. We'll see temperatures cooler in the lower 60s. We got a northwest breeze here this morning, 15 to 30 miles per hour. Temperatures are starting out in the middle. 40s, upper 40s across the entire area. Those winds will die down this afternoon at 10 to 20, turn to the southeast overnight at 10 miles per hour. Lows will drop to around 40. Tomorrow will warm up into the 70 to 75 degree range with gusty south winds 20 to 30 miles per hour. Then we got a round of storms that will come through after 4 p.m. and in the evening. Again, we could see some large hail, wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour, and maybe some locally heavy rain with this one. It does look like it's going to have some nice moisture and rainfall with it. Could pick up a quarter to three quarters inch. Some locally one inch plus amounts are possible. And then as we head towards Saturday, we'll see the high pressure build in. Lower 60s for Saturday, warming into the 70s on Sunday, heading into the mid to upper 70s on Monday. And that'll have a cool front coming through with a low pressure in the northern plains. There will have some potential severe weather in to our east in central and eastern Kansas followed by a period of five days of drier and cooler weather to end next week. And then we'll be looking at more storms towards the 12th through the 17th, the middle of the month. Once again, that's Ag Meteorologist Chris Schramick at Decision Weather Now, as well as America's Weather Streaming Channel for KYVZ Radio. I'm Joe Bazuric.